Retina Rounds episode number 56, Modified Yamani Technique Using 27 Gauge Trocars. Guest surgeon Dr. Abbas Hader from Chattanooga, Tennessee rescues a dislocated iris fixated three piece IOL. In this case, 27 gauge trocars instead of needles are used to perform a modified flanged intrascleral haptic fixation. Thank you, Dr. Hader, for your contribution, and let's check it out. So here's the patient. You can see there's a dislocated three-piece intraocular lens. The haptics of the lens are directly embedded in the iris, and you can see right here part of the haptic that is in the iris. Uh, now Dr. Hader has created a paracentesis and is using max grip forceps to try to rotate that haptic out of the iris, but it's not really moving, and rather than creating any additional iris trauma, he's gonna leave that side alone and try to tackle it from the visible optic-haptic junction on the other side. So now uh, filling the anterior chamber uh, with some viscoelastic, uh, that's a good idea to protect the endothelium during these maneuvers, and an additional paracentesis is being created uh, in the opposite quadrant to try to uh, uh, free up the haptic that's still attached to the iris. You can see here that uh, that haptic is being rotated uh, so that it is a little bit more mobile. And now the lens um, is being held still uh, at, the, uh, at the iris, but is sort of dangling down into the vitreous cavity. And that will make it a little bit easier to externalize the haptic uh, through the trocar that will be placed shortly. So now in the infrotemporal quadrant, the infusion line trocar is placed. And we've slowed down the video a little bit so that you can see these steps. Dr. Hader is marking where he's going to be placing his trocars. You can see that he's uh, placing this two and a half millimeters posterior to the limbus. And then using a toric marker, he's going 180 degrees to the opposite side uh, and placing, uh, making a mark for his trocar placement. So you can see now a 27 gauge trocar is being placed in much the same fashion that uh, a trocar would be placed to perform a vitrectomy. Uh, but the orientation of these trocars is such that they are in the same direction as how he wants to externalize the haptics. Now going to a posterior view, you can see that the intraocular lens is dangling in the vitreous cavity, uh, and that haptic just happens to be oriented in such a way uh, that it does not need to be rotated. You do want to make sure that the haptic is in the reverse S configuration. Grasping the tip of that haptic, he's now uh, uh, slid the trocar up the shaft of the max grip forcep and has externalized the haptic and is using a low temp cautery to create a small flange. Um, now uh, the other side, the other haptic can be rotated so that it's free of uh, its adhesion to the iris. Uh, and that, now that side of the uh, haptic will be dangling down into the vitreous cavity. And using a max grip forcep, that uh, haptic tip is being grasped. Ideally, uh, you'll want to grasp the haptic in such a way that the haptic is parallel to the path of the max grip forcep, uh, and now that, that uh, haptic is being externalized. Uh, by, by keeping the haptic parallel uh, to the path of the uh, max grip forcep, it can decrease the risk for kinking. Uh, and now you can see a, a small flange is being created again with the low temp cautery, uh, and that haptic is being, um, is being reposited back uh, through the, uh, the sclerotomy site, through that scleral tunnel. Now you'll notice in this configuration, the lens looks to be pretty well centered, but as the haptic is advanced or uh, reposited back into the sclerotomy, the lens looks to be a little bit nasally decentered. It is possible to re-externalize a haptic and shorten the, uh, the flange using the, uh, the cautery. Now, so you can see now some eye calls in the eye, the lens looks to be actually pretty well centered, and that's the end of the case. Here are a few take home points. Uh, when performing a modified Yamani technique using 27 gauge trocars, you do wanna make sure to place the trocars in the direction of the haptic orientation. Uh, again, with the haptics uh, in a reverse S configuration. Uh, and the trocars should be placed uh, partial thickness through, through the sclera before entering the vitreous cavity. Um, you should ideally do this with 27 gauge uh, trocars, not larger trocars since the sclerotomy width may be otherwise too big uh, and the haptic may dislocate. Obviously, this technique will be performed with a three-piece IOL, and you should make sure if you're rescuing an IOL that the haptics are not damaged. If the haptics are damaged, a new three-piece IOL should be used. Some advantages of the Yamani technique include the fact that it's a little bit easier to have a consistent intrascleral path length. Since the uh, uh, placement of trocars is a routine procedure uh, for vitroretinal surgeons, uh, but you do need to uh, enter a bit flatter with less of an angle between the stiletto and the scleral surface to ensure that the sclerotomy is long enough before entering the vitreous cavity. Another advantage is that 
if the haptic dislocates back into the eye, it's not that hard to replace the trocar and then re-externalize the haptic. Uh, in fact, the, the use of max grip forceps to externalize the haptic uh, is a much simpler technique than docking the haptic uh, in a needle prior to externalization. Uh, and, and finally, this technique does allow for a complete vitrectomy to be performed through the same trocars. Uh, however, if you're performing a vitrectomy, just make sure not to stress the sclerotomy sites too much since uh, it may not be tight enough to hold the flange haptic. Also, prior to externalization, you do want to ensure that the tip of the haptic is grasped uh, and that the haptic path is in line or parallel uh, to, the, uh, to the forcep. If the haptic is perpendicular to the forcep, it can kink uh, upon externalization. Overall, I think this is a great technique to rescue three-piece IOLs. Uh, it's relatively simple and can result in uh, an excellent post-operative results. Thank you, Dr. Hader, for sharing this case uh, and this technique. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.